So here we are at the beginning of another church year, a year full of so many unfulfilled possibilities, a year that we start as we do each September with our water ceremony. And I thought today, just for something different, because I have to come up with something different for water communion every year, I thought maybe in honor of the water ceremony, I would, for your entertainment, summon the rain. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Give me a second. Any minute now. Is it doing it yet? How about now? No, no, not working. I don't have it in me this morning. I'm so sorry. I really thought I was going to show you something impressive this morning, but I think we can still pull this, pull this out of the fire. I think we can make this happen. I think if I have a little help from all of you this morning, I can, I can make the rain happen here in this room. If over here, as I start to do a little action, would you follow me? about that. <laughs> oh, it's a stupid little trick, but I love it. Because we get to build something together just for a moment, a little bit of magic. It really sounds like a rainstorm, doesn't it? And each of you contributes what you can as you can. If you get tired of snapping, you can stop. Somebody else is snapping in the room and the sound continues. You contribute what you can to the extent of your ability when you can. And in this room, we make it rain. And I cannot do that alone. I need my community to work alongside me to make that happen. I cannot make it rain in the room all alone much like I cannot make good on the promises of this community single-handedly. And we make a lot of promises in this room on a Sunday morning. We make a lot of promises as Unitarian Universalists. We have a lot of expectations about what it is we can achieve in this world as a faith community, that the power of our unconditional love can transform the world into a place that is just and compassionate and equitable, that the power of our unconditional love given freely can change the world. That's a big promise. And sometimes it feels like there is no way on earth that we can fulfill it. I know week to week as I sit here and I preach, 
that I wish just through the power of my own words I could single-handedly speak the right ones that would cause that transformation, that would make the world a better place. But I just can't do it on my own. The fulfillment of our promise, the meeting of our expectations requires each and every one of us to show up and to give what we have within us. If you wish to take wine, you must give it also. For the world to be more loving, your love must be put into it. For the world to be more just, your work for justice has to be put into it. For the world to be more compassion, your compassion is required. You must give what is within you to meet the expectations we have as a faith community. And boy, is that tiring, isn't it? How do we keep doing it over and over again in the face of all the world throws at us in the sense of division and hatred? How do we keep doing it? I don't want you to feel this morning shamed by this notion that you have to give what is within you because Lord knows there are times when we just have to take a break got to take a rest. We don't have any wine left in us to give right now. Got to let it sit in the barrel a little bit before I can give any more of it. I have to take that rest, and that is fine. Because as our little rainstorm experiment shows us, someone else has something to give in that moment that you need to step back. What our promise requires of us, what our expectations as a faith community require of us is our presence, but not the constant presence, a persistent presence. And those are two different things, constance and persistence. constant all the time. We can't do it. We will burn ourselves out. We will change nothing. But there are moments when we can take that rest and have the wine renew within us. So we have just even a, a drop to give, just a drop. I can spare that. And then I rest when I have to until I've got one more to squeeze out. I come back when I can. I am persistent in giving what I have to give. I do not let the moments of weariness and defeat break me down to a point where I cannot give anymore. I take what I need in the moments when I need it from those who can still give and come back to give what I can, drop by drop. And in the process, we carve canyons. We carve out great spaces for ourselves and other in the world. Drop by drop, transformation happens if we are patient and we are persistent. To be a people of great expectations in this world is to be a people intentional in our persistence in what we have to give to the world. And so we come to our water communion, which, yes, I do something different with every year. This is now metaphor number 13 for our water ceremony. And in a little bit, I'm going to invite you all to come up and take one of these little dropper bottles. Normally, we've had that mixed common pot of water, and everybody takes a little vial of it somehow or another. This morning, we have pre-filled them because they're a pain in the butt to fill. And today, I think the tangible metaphor is far more important to take with you today. A reminder of the need for our persistence in the face of all that would try to wall us off. Drop by drop, moment by moment, 
over long strands of time, we achieve the transformation of the world into a just, fair, compassionate place. We expect through our persistence that our love will tear down walls. We expect through our persistence that our love will soften hard hearts. We expect that through our persistence, our love, the water, will carve out space for those who have no space. That is our work. And we must be persistent, drop by drop by drop by drop by drop by drop by drop. You say your heart's been turned to stone. Come on up and get some water. You say you want to be left alone.